thank you everybody uh, for joining. It's so nice to see that so many of you have joined today. Um, I will be talking about the Berlin Baghdad Railway, which is also known as uh, simply the Baghdad Railway or uh, the Baghdad Bahn in German. Uh, I chose this topic together with Mikey, um, and I thought it would be a great um, first presentation for me since um, I work or I have been working in the railway sector for the past uh, seven years. And yeah, it's a great topic to, to start with. So let's jump right into it. To give you some historical context, uh, this project um, was planned to connect the Ottoman Empire cities of Konya uh, in modern day Turkey with Baghdad in Iraq. Uh, the line was to be 600 kilometers long uh, that would ultimately lead to uh, Basra uh, on the Persian Gulf, where the Germans wanted to establish a port. The first phase uh, of this project started in the late uh, 19th century, and initi it initially started um, as an extension of, of an already existing line uh, between Haidar Pasha and Ankara in Turkey. And uh, by the year 1902, Sultan Abdul Hamid uh, granted, uh, granted a German firm the concession to lay new tracks eastward uh, from Ankara to Baghdad uh, via Adana, Aleppo, and Mosul uh, that would eventually go uh, to Basra. And the construction officially started in the year 1903. Um, I don't know why the pictures here aren't showing, but it's okay. I uh, wrote down the names of uh, four influential people who actually influenced this uh, project, um, namely uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II, who, who was, whose government was given the concession by the, by the Ottoman Empire through, um, through Sultan Abdul Hamid. Um, Wilhelm von Pressel was the engineering mastermind behind this, this project. Going back to uh, who, who, who were the people involved in this project. Um, here to the, uh, in the upper left corner is Kaiser Wilhelm II, whose government um, was given the concession to start, uh, to start this project by Sultan Abdul Hamid II, who was uh, running the Ottoman Empire at the time. And the lower left corner is uh, Wilhelm von Pressel, as I mentioned earlier, who was the uh, who was the engineer who designed the whole uh, project. And to the right was, uh, is Georg von Siemens, um, who along many other investors uh, financed this, uh, this really big project through the Deutsche Bank. I mean, this project was mainly financed uh, for by, by the Germans. And um, of course, a project of this magnitude uh, posed so many problems. The biggest problem started in the very beginning in the year 1903 um, with the expansion to the south. Uh, the geography of the Taurus Mountains uh, proved uh, to, to pose so, so many uh, enormous challenges. It was to be built as inland as, as, like, inland as possible, following the wishes of, the Kaiser, uh, of Kaiser Wilhelm, while still reaching important destinations. And uh, as a result, it was a great more, uh, uh, it was much more expensive uh, than initially thought uh, because this, um, it required the boring of tunnels and the scaling of mountain uh, ranges. So despite the massive injections uh, of German cash, the project still needed uh, a lot of money. And by the year 1915, just before the First World War uh, started, uh, the railway still had big gaps of almost 500 kilometers of uncompleted uh, railway lines and tunnels. Uh, so this severely limited its use later during the war. And uh, yeah, when the war began, it was basically impossible to, con to continue the construction. And by the time the age of the Ottoman Empire has come to an end and the construction uh, stopped near the Syrian Turkish border. 
So why why did they decide to build such a big railway line? What what was in it for the Germans? Uh, the Germans would would have gained access uh, to the oil fields in in Iraq, and with a line uh, to the port of Basra, it would have given Germany better access to uh, to the eastern parts of of the colon of the German colonial empire without having to go through the Suez Canal, which back then was um, controlled by, by the British. And this, of course, uh, really pissed off uh, the British. And many argue that um, this railway line was actually the leading cause or one of the main causes that uh, sparked World War I. Um, this was also a really good way to develop potentially new markets for exporting uh, German industrial goods to, to, the, to the East. And for the Ottomans, uh, it would provide a method in which the Ottoman government could reassert more control over its uh, air populated regions, which by the early 20th century um, were slipping away. So uh, the current situation, what, what happened to to this line, is the line still still working? Uh, it was uh, not until the 1940s that the line was uh, was completed, uh, but there was rarely any regulated rail uh, rail traffic. Anyway, I mean this this project was meant to uh, move people as well as um, uh, freight. Um, Turkey and Iraq. Um, wanted to resume, to resume uh, regulated traffic in the new millennium, but the recent war in Iraq destroyed any, any hope for this plan. Um, even today, the construction of this, uh, of this railway line um, is still considered one of the most impressive construction projects of that time. And um, if you want to have a nostalgic trip <laughs> from Haider Pasha today, you can. Here in the lower left corner, you can see this uh, magnificent uh, railway station uh, that was uh, a gift from the Sultan, a gift to the Sultan from Kaiser Wilhelm II. So yeah, various trains still run on these lines and uh, parts, parts of, uh, of this railway line were electrified or maintained to hold to be faster. I mean, there's there's a slow train, which is funnily enough called uh, express, the express line, but it stops at literally every station. Uh, however, one could travel uh, with it um, as far as Aleppo in Syria, but I, I don't know like today if you can still do this, but I'm pretty sure that parts of it and uh, parts of it are still running and you can definitely go and visit um, the, the train stations um, in the different countries in Syria and Iraq and in Turkey as well. Yeah, I compiled a list of uh, some links, some interesting reads, and um, there's a really nice uh, documentary, but it's sadly in, in German, so with no subtitles and some really cool photos. <laughs> so yeah. That's it from my side. And there's also the contact me um, page. Thank you for listening.